Today we are going back in time. We are going back to a time before full frame mirrorless cameras, back to a time when DSLRs were dominating the photography world, and back to a time when people were getting quite excited about the newly announced Canon 5D Mark II. We went back to 2008 to revisit the OG, the granddaddy, the very, very first Micro Four Thirds camera, the Lumix G1. like all people talk about now is the latest full frame mirrorless cameras and it was only five years ago that Nikon and Canon got into that particular race. A decade before this Panasonic released this, the Lumix G1 and while this wasn't the first mirrorless camera that particular achievement was taken by Epson in 2004, yes the printer people, followed by the Leica M8 in 2006. This was the birth of Micro Four Thirds. The Micro referring to the removal of the mirror resulting in a much more compact design. You see, Micro Four Thirds brought mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras to the masses, being considerably cheaper than the Epson and the Leica, coming in at around 800 US dollars on release. So fast forward to now, 15 years later, how does this thing hold up? Well, as you might expect, things have come on quite a long way in 15 years, because tech, as you probably realised, seems to work in dog years. So first off, let's talk about the price. I just picked this up for £37, which is about $45, and a far cry from the $800 it would have cost at launch. On the top here, we have the standard mode dial with all of the things you would expect, shutter priority, aperture priority, manual mode, as well as a bunch of scene modes. We have some switches over here for the power and another switch for the drive modes and buttons for the Q menu and the film mode, which is your basic picture profiles for JPEG images like natural, standard, etc. Over on the other side, we have another dial for the focus modes, AFS, AFC, etc. And a little switch here for the pop-up flash. On the back, you have the standard thumb controls, a fully articulating screen, your playback button, and a button to switch between the screen and the EVF. From a design point of view, Panasonic didn't do anything radical here. Instead, they went for a camera that looked like a DSLR. But functionally, it behaved more like a compact camera. And so for anyone who's familiar with the Lumix FZ bridge cameras, you'll be completely at home navigating the G1's menu system. Images from the 12 megapixel sensor look really nice up to about 400 ISO. Start to look a bit shaky when it gets to about 800 ISO and honestly quite nasty after that. But this seems to be a common thing, not only with Micro Four Thirds cameras from this time, but also many of the APS-C models I've used as well. Now, the handling of the G1 is actually quite nice. It's got this nice grip on it, and it's got a fair bit of weight to it, coming in at around 435 grams with the battery and the memory card, and around 605 grams with the kit lens on there as well. Right, a quick rundown as to how I've got this camera set up and how I'm using this camera. I've got the 14 to 42 kit lens with me, which is something similar to what would have come with the G1 when it was released. I've got this, the 45mm f1.8 with me, because it's my favourite. And uh, I'm using the camera in program auto mode. So the camera's making all the decisions, and, uh, but I am shooting raw, so I've got some latitude in post for you know, tweaking the images to how I like.
the time of its release, the Lumix G1 had some quite stiff competition from the likes of Canon and Nikon. Canon had a very popular Rebel series, the latest of which was the 450D or Rebel XSI. And then Nikon had their more Prolian and APS-C lineup with the likes of the D90. Right, the wind noise got the better of the audio on this section, but I was just saying about the G1's video capabilities and the fact that it has none. You would have to wait until the GH1 for video in a Micro Four Thirds camera. Now at this price I don't think you can go wrong with a camera like this if you want something that's purely just for photography. And mind you're not going to get results like you would get with the more up to date and more uh, high level EM1 Mark II that I've got. Um, the EM1 Mark II is like 10 times the price so obviously. So if you want a very budget friendly camera that has access to all of the Micro Four Thirds lenses and manual controls to give you that little bit more versatility than what you would get from a phone. A camera like this is absolutely perfect, especially if you're just starting out. Right, if you enjoyed this look back at the Lumix G1, do give that like button a poke, and I will see you in the next one. Coffee time! <laughs> Mike's cheering in the background. Okay.